I have started working on this little space shooter game in Godot and thought it could be fun to make a series of beginner friendly tutorials on different technical aspects of it as I move along. In this first part I'm going to explain how to make a starfield parallax background like this one. The basic idea behind a parallax background if you don't know already is to move repeated images layered on top of each other at different speeds to create a sense of depth in the scene. You can easily do this in Godot with the parallax background and parallax layer nodes. But first of all, we need some textures that we can scroll. I used a sprite to paint a starfield texture. It should be large enough to fill the screen later on. For the blocky pixel art look of my game, I create the texture at half the screen size and later scale it up by a factor of 2 for display. I use a black background layer just to see better what I'm doing. The exported textures will be mostly transparent. On a layer above, I spray paint a few stars, not too many. The spray can in a sprite has a pretty small radius, so it might not be the best tool for this task. I like the tiled view mode though, which makes it easier to ensure the images look nice when repeated seamlessly. Which isn't too hard with the few dots I'm painting here anyway. Below I create another layer for some distant nebula. Eventually I soft erase some of the stars for more variety. I export the two layers as PNGs and we are ready to move into Godot. In a new project I set the base resolution so my scale textures are going to fill the screen. I make it resizable by selecting the canvas items mode here. You can import the texture images by simply dragging them into the file system view at the lower left. It's also a good idea to give them their own folder. In a new scene, I add a parallax background node. Each moving layer goes into a parallax layer child node. This by itself doesn't display anything, so I create a sprite 2D node here that holds the actual image. Untick centered from the offset property to have the upper left corner align with the viewport. Now scale up the sprite by a factor of 2 to fill the screen. And don't forget to set the texture sample mode to nearest for a crisp pixelated look. I am also adding a black color rect as a static background. On each parallax layer below the parallax background, we can set the relative scroll speed. I keep the first layer at 1 as sort of the reference speed. The mirroring setting is set up to tile the texture. We have scaled the texture from 640 by a factor of 2, so it should repeat at an offset of 1280. If we run this now, nothing moves. We haven't told the parallax background node yet how much to shift the view for each rendered frame. So let's add a continuous move along the x-axis. The constant here defines the scroll speed in pixels per second. We modify the offset of the parallax background in the process function. Control drag the parallax background node into the editor view to create a variable for it. On that variable we simply add to the scroll offset x component, or rather subtract since we want our background to move to the left. The constant multiplied by delta gives us the movement for the current frame. Running the whole thing again, we have an infinitely scrolling background. 
This isn't too exciting though, so let's add a few more layers. I'm going to put one more Starfield layer in front, using the same texture flipped. I'm also scaling it up again to create larger foreground dust specks. With the modulate property on the sprite, we can dim the farther starfield texture a little. We also make it move a little faster than the first layer. And finally, put the nebula texture in the back. Oh, and I almost forgot to adjust the mirror setting for this scaled up layer. And slow down the motion of the nebula layer too. Let's dim the nebula a little and run the scene again. I think we can call this done. Now we can add scene content on top. Keep in mind that parallax background derives from canvas layer. By default it sits on layer minus 100, so all of the parallax background children will render behind the rest of the scene. You can change this to create a parallax foreground if you like. Also, we have to animate this one separately in the script. Let's give it a different color. And here's the final scene. That's all I have to say on the topic today. This is really my first tutorial aiming at beginners and I would love to make more so if you found this useful, like, subscribe and drop a comment let me know what kind of information you are looking for. Next time I think I'm going to explain how to create these puffs of smoke using a 2D particle system. Hope to see you there and keep making games, bye!